Hi there and welcome to this episode of Kids Fishing and today I thought we would talk about saltwater fishing baits and specifically the uh, fish bait that you cut up rather than the use of plastics which is another whole topic and the use of plastics is becoming stronger and stronger uh, a lot of people really enjoy using plastics for a range of different reasons but I think we'll talk about those in another episode. So on to your traditional saltwater fishing baits. So let's first begin with mullet and mullet's been around as a fishing bait for quite some time. I remember it being available when I was a young boy uh, and it's a good, I think, all-round fishing bait. It cuts up well, it's fairly durable and stays on your hook, which means you can cast it as well if you're surf fishing or something like that. Uh, it's got fairly good scent properties and some people tend to prefer mullet over other baits. I, I don't really have a preference that way, but I think it's, uh, from my understanding, a pretty good all-round uh, saltwater fishing bait. The next bait is Trevally, which again is a little bit similar to mullet. It's durable, it casts well, you can cut it up, it's got um, good skin texture so it's quite tough, uh, which is good for when you're actually hooking through and putting your, setting your baits up on your hooks. Uh, it's got quite good scent properties as well and again it's been one of those baits that's been around for a long time and I remember those little boxes of uh, Trevally bait that you could buy as a child and I've used it in the times myself. The next fishing bait is squid bait and I've used this a lot over the years and it's a very well thought of bait. A couple of the, the pros for squid is it's incredibly durable so it stays on your hook and it literally lasts forever until a fish comes along and bites it. I guess one of the cons for it is I don't think it has quite the same scent properties as some of the other saltwater fishing baits but it's certainly a preferred bait for people that fish with long lines or that their bait is going to be in the water for a long time. So squid bait's great. One of the things too is you can actually, I guess, mature squid bait. So you can leave it overnight, uh, defrosted, and it definitely gets a lot more smellier. Uh, one of the downsides is that the flesh starts to soften up and it starts to get to the point where it will actually come off your hook. So squid bait's a great all-round fishing bait. Salted Bonito is another bait um, that's out there in the fishing uh, bait freezers. I haven't used it a great deal, I have used it um, a little bit and I didn't enjoy the experience personally. I found it quite flaky so the skin kind of flaked and I found it um, difficult to, to use because the flesh on the, the Bonito doesn't act in the same way as some of the other baits. It tends to kind of chunk and crumble uh, and I think it's certainly um, durable to a degree but I just personally didn't like Bonito um, or salted Bonito anyway. Fishing with pilchards is one of my favorite saltwater fishing baits. Uh, pilchards which are kind of a, like a larger herring and they do vary in, in size when you buy them in packs of one or two kgs. Now I use them a lot, I find them a fantastic bait. Often when uh, squid or some of the other baits don't work, pilchards will, especially if you're using whole pilchards because they look very natural in the water. If you're using um, maybe stray line or whole pilchard, they'll float down through the water column and look very natural. Uh, disadvantage with pilchards is when they get soft uh, they don't stay on the hook either um, from the perspective of fish biting the bait or whether you are casting it with a rod and the bait will come off. So you can fix that by using a twine to bind the pilchard to your hook uh, and spend a little bit more time setting up. Or the alternative which is generally used is to keep them frozen or mostly frozen which gives them a lot more structural strength. That uh, means you can put your hooks through without them um, falling apart and you can cast them a lot further. And uh, pilchards are a very effective bait, so I, I use them a lot. 
Shellfish is another one of those baits that have been uh, has been around for a long time and I've used uh, shellfish when I was a boy and the great thing about shellfish is that you can go and collect your own uh, at low tide especially in some of those areas that are less polluted or less fished out. Shellfish works really well for certain types of targeted fish as well, things like uh, perori which don't tend to uh, eat other baits, they will go for shellfish and also shellfish is a natural bait so it's already occurring, snapper are already eating it. Uh, the only downside I guess with shellfish is that the bait size is quite small so either you're going to have to fish with smaller baits or you're going to have to put a lot more shellfish onto that single big hook and stack them up so that's kind of a disadvantage. They're pretty durable depending on what type of shellfish you're using uh, and they, they're relatively easily available. So again, another um, bait to maybe have a look at and think about. Garfish and Piper. So they're, the, they're kind of like a, 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 not a herring, but they're a long uh, slender uh, fish with a long beak. So either Garfish or Piper. Um, they're a fantastic bait. Normally you have to catch them and then use them as bait. Uh, and they're kind of in a way like a pilchard as far as the way that you would use them but um, I, I've never seen them available in a, in a freezer maybe you can buy them uh, but they're certainly a great bait when you can get hold of them. Live bait is a topic really in itself so I'm only going to talk about it quickly because that really warrants a, a whole um, video in its own right and there's a lot of people out there that really specialize in using live bait and obviously the, the large game fishermen as well. Uh, the thing with live bait is you've got to work out what type of fish that you're targeting because that will then impact on the type of live bait you're going to use and also the size of the bait too. So whether you're using live herrings for maybe John Dory or one of those other fish or you're using a bigger bait like uh, kawai or Australian salmon and obviously they vary in size from you know, mullet size type fish right up to big seagull and kawai and you'll use those depending on the size of the fish that you're targeting. Big kingfish will eat uh, a very large live bait but obviously some of the fish with smaller mouths will only be uh, effective with smaller live baits. Piper or garfish is a fantastic live bait when you can get them and the kingfish will definitely snaffle those up when they see them. Uh, there's also how you hook up the live bait as well and I think that's really a topic for another video. And there are different ways to hook up depending on how you're using the live bait. So live bait is a fantastic option when you can use it and that there are target species swimming around whether that's kingfish or something else but I think we should probably talk about that in another video. Now that we've talked about a use of different types of saltwater fishing baits I'd love to know your personal experiences. What have you used and what have you found great and have you got any kind of tried and true fishing tips for using saltwater bait and also how have you found using different baits with your children is there a type of bait that you think works best for kids whether it's shellfish whether it's live bait or trevally or, or whatever i'd love to know your thoughts leave your comments below and if this is your first time to kids fishing then i invite you to subscribe for more fishing tips and tricks and to follow our kids fishing adventures Thanks for watching this episode of Kids Fishing. Kids Fishing.